switching to a plant-based diet has been shown to achieve better outcomes than those reported for conventional treatments for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Check out the video. One of the most common questions physicians treating patients with inflammatory bowel disease are asked is whether changing one's diet can positively affect the course of their disease. Now, traditionally, our answer had been, you know, we have no clue. But this may now be changing, given the evidence that hydrogen sulfide may be playing a role in ulcerative colitis. And since the sulfur-containing amino acids concentrated in meat cause an increase in colonic levels of this rotten egg gas, maybe we should take off the meat. See, animal protein isn't just associated with an increased risk of getting inflammatory bowel disease in the first place, but also IBD relapses once you have the disease. This is a recent development. Because the concept of IBD as a lifestyle disease mediated mainly by a westernized diet is not widely appreciated, an analysis of diet and the follow-up period after diagnosis in relation to a relapse of inflammatory bowel disease had been ignored, but not any longer. Ulcerative colitis patients in remission and their diets were followed for a year to see which foods were linked to the bloody diarrhea coming raging back, and the strongest relationship between a dietary factor and an increased risk of relapse observed in the study was for a high intake of meat. So what if you have people lower their sulfur-containing amino acid intake by decreasing their consumption of animal products? They tried it on four ulcerative colitis patients, and without any change in meds, they experienced like a fourfold improvement in their loose stools. In fact, they felt so much better, they didn't think it ethical to try switching them back. Since sulfur-containing amino acids are the primary source of dietary sulfur, a low-sulfur diet essentially means a shift from a typical diet high in animal protein and fat and low in fiber to more of a plant-based diet. Westernized diet are pro-inflammatory, and plant-based diets are anti-inflammatory. Uh, let's see what treatment with a plant-based diet can do after the onset of ulcerative colitis during a low-carbohydrate weight loss diet. A 36-year-old man lost 13 pounds on a low-carb diet, but also lost his health, diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Put him on a diet centered around whole plant foods, though, and poof, symptoms resolved without medication. OK, but this is just one case. I mean, case reports are like glorified anecdotes. Right? The value of case reports lies in their ability to inspire researchers to put it to the test, and that's exactly what they did. There had never been a study published focusing on using plant-based diets for the treatment of ulcerative colitis until now. Considering the lack of a suitable diet to be the biggest issue faced in the current treatment of inflammatory bowel disease, and regarding it as a lifestyle disease caused mainly by our omnivorous diet, a group of Japanese gastroenterologists had been providing a plant-based diet to all patients with IBD for over a decade, and publishing extraordinary results, far better uh, than have to date been reported in the medical literature. I, I profiled some of the early work in one of my first videos that went up on nutritionfacts.org, uh, found to be effective in the maintenance of remission in Crohn's disease by 100% at one year, 90% at two years. So how about a plant-based diet for relapse prevention in ulcerative colitis? Educational hospitalization meant uh, bringing patients into the hospital to control their diet and educate them about the benefits of plant-based eating so they'd be more motivated to continue it at home. Most patients, about three-quarters, experienced improvements, such as you know, disappearance or decrease in bloody stool during hospitalization. Fantastic. OK, but here's the really exciting part. Then they followed the patients for five years, and 81% were able to remain in remission the whole time, and 98% were able to keep the disease at bay for at least a year. I mean, that blows other treatments away. Uh, those relapse rates are far lower than those reported with medication. Uh, under conventional treatment, other studies found that about half relapsed, compared to only 2% among those taught to eat healthier. A plant-based diet was previously shown to be effective in both the active and quiescent stages of Crohn's disease. Uh, the current study has shown that a plant-based diet is effective in both the active and quiescent stages of ulcerative colitis as well. And so they did another study on even more severely affected cases with active disease and found the same thing, far beating out conventional drug therapy.
people felt so much better, they were still eating more plant-based even six years later. The researchers conclude that a plant-based diet is effective for treating ulcerative colitis to prevent a relapse. Why? Well, you know, plant-based diets are rich in fiber, which feeds our good gut bugs. That may partly explain why a plant-based diet prevents a variety of chronic diseases. And so that's what we may be seeing with inflammatory bowel disease, suggesting that replacing an omnivorous diet with a plant-based diet is the right approach. It's like using plant-based diets to treat the cause of heart disease, our number one killer, not just safer and cheaper, but works better. No adverse side effects noted for plant-based eating. Now let's compare that to the side effects of immunosuppressants used for ulcerative colitis, like cyclosporin. Side effects include... And now we have even fancier drugs that cost about $60,000 a year. That's $5,000 a month. And they don't even work very well, with clinical remission in one year of only like 17 to 34 percent. And instead of no adverse side effects, they can give you a stroke. Uh, they can give you heart failure. They can even give you cancer, including a rare type of cancer that often results in death. Or how about a serious brain disease known as progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, which can kill you and for which there is no known treatment or cure? Yeah, yeah, increased risk of death, but did we mention how nice and small the pill was and the easy-to-open bottle? Important to our understanding and prevention of the global increase in inflammatory bowel disease, we know that dietary fiber appears to reduce risk, whereas dietary fat Animal protein and sugar may increase risk. Despite the recognition of the westernization of lifestyle as a major driver of the growing incidence of inflammatory bowel disease, uh, no countermeasures against such lifestyle changes have been recommended, except that patients with Crohn's disease shouldn't smoke. Uh, look, we know consuming whole plant-based foods is synonymous with an anti-inflammatory diet. Here's a list of foods with inflammatory effects. Here's a list of foods with anti-inflammatory effects. So how about putting a plant-based diet to the test? Just cutting down on red and processed meat didn't work, but what about cutting down on all meat? 25-year-old got diagnosed with Crohn's disease but failed to enter clinical remission despite standard medical therapy. But after switching to a diet based exclusively on grains, legumes like beans, split peas, chickpeas, lentils, vegetables, and fruits, he entered clinical remission without the need for medication and showed no signs of Crohn's disease on follow-up colonoscopy. It's worth uh, delving into some of the details. The conventional treatment they started him on is infliximab, sold as uh, Remicade, which can cause a stroke and may increase your chances of getting lymphoma and other cancers, but it's a bargain for only $35,000 a year and it may not even work in 35 to 40 percent of patients, and that seemed to be the case here. So they upped the dose after 37 weeks and still suffering after two years on the drug until he tried completely eliminating animal products and processed foods from his diet, finally experiencing a complete resolution of his symptoms. Prior to this, his diet had been a you know, typical American diet, but having experienced complete clinical remission for the first time since his diagnosis, he decided to switch to a whole food plant-based diet permanently, severely reducing his intake of processed food and limiting animal products to one serving or less per week. And whenever his diet started to slip, symptoms started coming back, but he could always wipe them out by eating healthier. After six months of implementing these changes in diet and lifestyle, including stress relief and exercise, a follow-up demonstrated complete mucosal healing of the gut lining with no visible evidence of Crohn's disease. We know a diet consisting of whole grains, legumes, fruits, and vegetables has shown to be helpful in the prevention and treatment of heart disease, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, gallbladder disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and many cancers. Although further research is required, this case report suggests that Crohn's disease might be added to this list of conditions, but that further research has already been done. About 20 patients with Crohn's disease were placed on a semi-vegetarian diet, meaning no more than a half serving of fish once a week and a half serving of meat once every two weeks, and achieved a 100% remission rate at one year and 90% at two years. 
Some strayed from the diet, though. Let's see what happened to them. After a year, half had relapsed, and at year two, only 20% remained in remission. But those that stuck with it had remarkable success. I mean, it was a small study with no formal control group, but represents the best reported result in Crohn's relapse prevention published in the medical literature to date. Nowadays, Crohn's patients are often treated with so-called biologic drugs, expensive injected antibodies that suppress your immune system and have effectively induced and maintained remission in Crohn's disease, but not in everyone. Current remission rate in Crohn's with early use of Remicade is 64%. So 30 to 40 percent of patients are likely to experience a disabling disease course even after treatment. So what about adding a plant-based diet? Remission rates jumped up to 100% for those who didn't have a, had to drop out due to drug side effects. Uh, even if you exclude the milder cases, 100% of those with serious, even severe fulminant disease achieved remission. But if you look at gold standard systematic reviews, they conclude that the effects of dietary interventions on inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis are uncertain. This is because only randomized controlled trials were considered. Uh, totally understandable, as that's the most rigorous study design. Nevertheless, people with inflammatory bowel disease deserve advice based on the best available evidence rather than no advice at all. And switching to a plant-based diet has been shown to achieve far better outcomes than those uh, reported on conventional treatments in both active and quiescent stages in both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. For example, here's one-year remission rates in Crohn's disease, 100%, compared to budesonide, an immunosuppressant corticosteroid drug, a half-elemental diet, meaning like at-home tube phoenix, the $35,000 a year Remicade, or the $75,000 a year drug Humira, safer, cheaper, and more effective? Maybe we should recommend plant-based diets for inflammatory bowel disease. It would seem clear that treatment based on treating the cause of the disease is optimal. Spreading the word about healthier diets could help halt the scourge of inflammatory bowel, but how are people going to hear about this amazing research without some kind of you know, public education campaign? That's what nutritionfacts.org is all about.